All right, team, we're going to do our seven technical tips for growing better mushrooms. We're going to try and do this nice and quickly because I have to go feed uh, the cows. All right, tip number one, uh, humidity, CO2, and temperature. You need to get these things right. Uh, humidity and CO2 are the easy ones. Here's my little humidifier here. Uh, this humidifies uh, the area I'm in, um, and I use these big ducts here to cycle the CO2-filled air out. Now, temperature is the challenging one um, that you may have problems depending on your climate. It's reasonably tricky for us. Step two is grow reliable cultures from a reputable spawn uh, supplier. I've always thought that if your spawn supplier grows mushrooms from the spawn they produce, then you know it's going to be pretty good spawn. Personally, I make all my own spawn. Um, here's my spawn here uh, incubating. Check out that for contamination. Put that up the top there because it's all green. Uh, we very rarely get contamination. That was a Horatian bag, so that is what it is. But we make all our own spawn. I have purchased spawn, sorry, I have purchased cultures from a, a reputable supplier uh, in America and imported it over, and it was the worst culture I've ever grown. And that culture or spawn supplier had no evidence of them actually growing mushrooms themselves. They had all the stuff for sale, but when you look through their website and that, they don't actually show any images of the products they're growing. Um, I shouldn't have trusted them, I should have trusted my gut, but I didn't. It cost a lot to bring it in, we had to get it tested and whatnot. But it was basically a horrible, horrible culture and not fit for commercial purposes. So buy your spawn and your cultures from people who are, are reputable and grow them themselves. Number three, cheap equipment works. But if you want to get serious, you need good quality equipment. Let's have a look. This here is an Inkbird controller. Now, they work for a beginner, but they are cheap and they break often. So you call that cheap equipment and it gets you going, but it's not good quality. Over here, I've got some old secondhand um, equipment. Now, this is a Dwyer. These are Dwyer probes. That's a humidity probe and that's a CO2 probe. And although these are secondhand, I would still call these uh, good quality equipment. One, because they are American made, even though they're old American made, so you know it's gonna be good. Two, because the uh, company is quite reputable. This is what we use in our fruiting rooms here. These are Vaisalas. There's one here and there's a CO2 one down the back. Um, this one looks dirty because it's the one I've been using for like years now. Um, but they are also very good quality. That's a humidity probe there. All my probes and sensors are controlled through the logic. Um, up here on my Inatech controller there. So that's the brains behind my mushroom farm. Now using that controller here relieves the need to use one of these controllers here. All right, tip number four, don't overgrow your mushrooms. A lot of people do this. Um, I'll do it myself occasionally because it's just simply hard to get to some of your mushrooms. Um, we've got a problem this week with a rack here. Here we are, these mushrooms here are overgrowing, unfortunately. You see how the edges look terrible? And they haven't packed on any size. That's because we had a, uh, a temperature issue this week. Our fruiting room's now gotten far too warm. Um, and these, uh, it was warm at night, and so these didn't pack on the weight they normally do at night. Instead, they keep growing and they overgrow really quickly, so they don't get very big and they uh, quality degrades. And you don't want to do that. It's always better to have a uh, a better quality mushroom over a bigger mushroom that's of less quality. Especially if you're turning out a, a larger volume like we are. Number five, 90% of your uh, contamination problems in your bulk substrate will come from a poor sterilization process. Here's our sterilizing tank down here. Now if you don't run these things for long enough, they won't kill enough microbes in your bulk substrate and that's when you'll get a lot of uh, bad growth after you've inoculated it. Now we just sterilize in this thing here, we do it for about 24 hours, it just works, I don't care about power. Um, and then I, I open the lid and I cool them down while they're still sitting in this, just outside. I can leave them sit there for three days, right? There's dust, there's pollen, there's all sorts, there's sheep shit nearby. Um, and I just leave it there, I don't particularly care. And then we carry them over, we put them in our barrow, we carry them over, we put them on our racks, we take them into our clean room, but then we open the front of the bag up in front of the flow hood, scoop um, the, the spawn in, um, and our, our contamination rate is extremely low. Um, very, very rarely do I get a bag that contams. All these are going to go in today, all these bags here, um, and these are all absolutely fine. And there's nothing wrong with any of those bags. You did just see one contaminated bag earlier on in the video that I have. So that one contaminated bag here, um, I don't think that's from a sterilization uh, process. That is from our Horatian culture, which is like a really horrible, slow growing culture. Um, so oh, I don't know exactly what's caused that, but that is very rare for us. That might only happen one every you know, 500 bags or something. 
but as long as you're running your bags through a decent sterilization cycle, um, you shouldn't have much issue with bag contamination. All right, number six, just use Masters Mix. If you're a beginner, um, you can try all these substrate experiments, uh, do what you want, but in the end, you're always gonna come back to Masters Mix, and that's when we just use soy hull. You can see my bags of soy hull here. We mix it with, um, we do pine pellets here in New Zealand. Um, mix it in our blender here, uh, and we run that through the hydrator, and that's good to go. Um, if you're a beginner, just use it. Just don't, don't think you're gonna reinvent the wheel. The wheel's been invented, and it's Masters Mix. Now one reason Masters Mix is really good, we had a sample sent to a lab, we had the carbon-nitrogen ratio analysed, and that carbon-nitrogen ratio came back as the optimum carbon-nitrogen ratio for uh, oyster mushroom growth, or what studies have shown is optimum for oyster mushroom growth. So that was, um, uh, that was a good indicator to us uh, as to uh, why it's so good and why it performs so well. All right, and tip number seven, our last tip, is to clean, 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 clean. When you grow mushrooms, you do need to clean all the time and you need to clean everything. We've got a very strict cleaning schedule here and we clean once a week. Um, and I'll show you now what it looks like. We'll clean, we'll clean tomorrow and I'll show you what it looks like given six days in our fruiting room. It gets pretty bad, pretty quick. So here's our fruiting room here. We've taken some of the racking out. Um, you can see the floor. It's got um, dirt all over it. We track the dirt in. Um, there's a lot of spore stuff which gets um, stuck everywhere. This here is supposed to be covering the um, drain hole so no air comes in. Um, and then you can see that which runs out our um, ventilation pipe. Now when we come in tomorrow that'll all be gone. That's literally one week doing that. Now the reason it's doing that at the back is because as it ejects that dirty air um, up that uh, chimney, I suppose you call it out the roof, um, the warm air actually condenses on the chimney and it actually dribbles back down and it dribbles into our fruiting room. So we um, get that cleaned up every week. But that there is one week, so you can imagine how bad it gets if you neglect cleaning. You also, I believe, you see the quality of your caps decrease if there's a lot of uh, a lot of bad stuff around as well. And it helps keep the insects down. Right, here's a bonus tip team. You can grow mushrooms on pine pallets. Those are pine pellets here, that's Pinus radiata. Uh, that's what I grow on. That mix of soy hull creates master's mix. Um, when I first started growing mushrooms, there's a lot of information out there that you can't grow on pine. Um, a lot of that's false. I've probably, I've grown shiitake on pine, it kind of does work. Um, but all your oyster species, just fine, just go with it, you know, use it, it's good to go. As long as you mix something with it, a nitrogen content with it, that will work. <laughs> uh. Oh, the cows. Sorry girls, sitting there starving today. Look out, look out. Here you go, here you go.